Hello and welcome to your favorite program, DPR, the Petroleum Industry Regulator. A quick reminder of the mission of this program is not only to inform you, but also to educate you on what the Department of Petroleum Resources is doing to regulate Nigeria's oil and gas industry. Like the Director, Chief Executive Officer of the Department puts it, DPR is a business enabler in the Nigeria oil and gas industry. Today our focus is on Nigeria's gas potentials. It is on record that Nigeria is a gas country. What do I mean by this? The geologists have proven that the country has more natural gas than crude oil. It is also on record that as of January 1, 2020, Nigeria's gas reserves stood at 203 trillion standard cubic feet while the United States of America Geological Survey puts Nigeria's reserve at 600 trillion standard cubic feet. Remember, the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources declared last year as the year of gas and the decade, the decade of gas. You get to know more Nigeria's gas potentials after these DPR tidbits. I'm Suleiman, welcome again. The Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR, has issued license to establish the first floating LNG production plant for the processing of 176 million standard cubic feet of natural gas and condensate per day to UTM Offshore Limited, an indigenous oil and gas company. The license was issued at the department's headquarters in Abuja. Director and Chief Executive Officer, Department of Petroleum Resources, Engineer Sereki Awalu, while presenting the license, explained that the milestone was a reinforcement of the promise and commitment of President Muhammad Buhari to Nigerians to promote indigenous participation in the oil and gas sector. It is also to ensure that companies come to Nigeria and do business in an equitable way to stimulate the economy and create jobs. Engineer Sarki Awalu assured investors that the department will continue to create opportunities and enabling environment for companies. Through the provisions of regulatory tools like license, permits and approvals for them to do their business, the managing director of UTM Nigeria Offshore Limited Mr. Julius Roan, who received the license, promised to abide by the terms of issuance and stick to the two years validity period of the license to establish LTE from the date the license was issued. The Department of Petroleum Resources has promised to upgrade the downstream sector of the Nigerian oil and gas industry to global standards with improved technology in the ongoing automation process. The Director and Chief Executive Officer of the Department, Engineer Sarki Awalu, said of this at a virtual meeting with the members of Major Oil Marketers Association of Nigeria, MoMAN. The Director, CEO, said the Department is currently deploying appropriate technology to enhance value for operators and investors alike in the downstream sector. Engineer Awalu informed his audience the DPR has already launched the Downstream Remote Monitoring System, DRMS, in Abuja. According to him, DRMS is an inventory and regulatory tool designed to track product retail outlets and depots using the short code STAR7117 hash. He re-emphasized that the introduction of DRMS will create value for the sector by providing access to data for efficient management of your operation. The CEO of the department said that DPR has developed a framework around quality, quantity, integrity and safety for petroleum products in response to current situation of price deregulation in the downstream sector of the oil and gas industry. 
Over the years, the Department of Petroleum Resources DPR has been carrying out its mandate of supervision and regulation of the Nigerian oil and gas industry, the cornerstone of our country's economy. It has built an enviable platform with highly trained manpower to carry out these responsibilities that cut across the value chain of the upstream, midstream and downstream of the industry. Today, DPR and its leadership is still bringing up new and excellent innovations to see to the optimum performance of the industry, bringing down the cost of production, increasing revenue to government and the population. Our service instruments of licenses, permits and approvals enable business and create opportunities for investors in the Nigerian oil and gas industry. Yes, DPR is here for you. For more information on DPR, please visit our website www.dpr.gov.ng, Twitter at DPR Hotline and Instagram at DPR Hotline. Telephones plus 234-1279-0000 and 1903-7150. It is on record that Nigeria has the biggest natural gas reserve in Africa, but also one of the biggest in the world. It also has one of the best qualities of gas with low hydrogen sulfite and low carbon dioxide. Ironically, most of Nigerian gas in use today is associated gas. For more detail on Nigeria's natural gas, here's a little background report. Take a listen. Nigeria, from all indications, is endowed with more natural gas reserves than crude oil. Her proven gas reserves today is put at 203 trillion standard cubic feet, making it the world's ninth largest reserves and number one in Africa. The life index of this reserve is put at 75 years. However, geologists believe that the undiscovered potentials of Nigeria's natural gas are even higher. The United States Geological Survey, in a report, estimates Nigeria's gas reserve potentials to be well over 600 trillion standard cubic feet. If proven, this will rank the nation's gas reserve potentials amongst the world's top three. It is on record that Nigeria has not made any deliberate effort to search for natural gas. What we have today for more than 60 years of crude oil exploration and production is associated gas, which for several years has been flared. Being associated gas, there is no way crude oil can be produced without flaring the natural gas. However, some efforts were made by the government and its agencies to turn around this situation. Among them is the September 28, 1979 Associated Gas Reinjection Act, which mandates all oil producing companies to reinject all gas produced in the process of drilling and producing crude oil. Failure to do this attracted some penalties. Another is penalty for gas flare gas prevention of waste and pollution regulations of 2018. However, several efforts by various governments at the federal level to encourage oil and gas companies to do more in the process of exploration of crude oil and natural gas encountered are put into good use are generating positive results. Incentives were offered. All these are aimed at maximizing the huge potentials of Nigeria's natural gas reserve. It will be recalled that on the 13th of February 2008, the federal government approved the Gas Master Plan. This plan is part of the grand plan to make Nigeria a major player in the international gas market. It is also to expand the domestic market. In the plan, are three key strategies. First, the stimulation of the multiplier effects of gas in the domestic economy and positioning Nigeria competitively in the high-value export market. Second, guarantee the long-term energy security of the country. And third, make available gas 
for industry and power. Prior to the gas master plan policy, efforts were made to convert the flared natural gas into a valuable resource through execution of various projects. Since the conception of the gas master plan, the gas subsector has had a good run. The last years have witnessed more operating companies putting in place different natural gas monetization projects. The Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas NLNG plant at Boni, River State, which commenced operation in 1999 with two trains, has increased to six trains with the seventh about to start. The petrochemical plant at Eleme, the fertilizer plant at Eleme, and the Trans West Africa gas pipeline designed to supply gas to Bene, Togo, and Ghana has since been completed. Others are numerous power plants and the aluminium smelting plant at Ikorabasi. It should be noted that the gas master plan is a tool to implement the gas policy of the government. Following the gas master plan, the Federal Executive Council in 2017 also approved the national gas policy. The main thrust of the policy is to set the goals, strategies, and an implementation plan for establishing a framework aimed at driving the institutional, legal, regulatory, and commercial reforms necessary for attracting investment into the gas sector. Today, significant reduction in the volume of gas being flared has been achieved from 75% of produced gas in the year 2000 to about 10% currently. There are also many other projects directed towards utilization of Nigeria's abundant natural gas. The range from secondary to tertiary gas distribution network in the country meant for industrial and domestic gas supply. In view of government's drive, to achieving flares out, the Nigeria Gas Flare Commercialization Program, NGFCP, was launched by the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources on December 13, 2016. The program was aimed at developing a different approach to eliminating routine gas flaring for companies which have failed to do so. The process is to eliminate gas flare, that is, by assigning flare sites with ongoing routine flare to private entities to commercialize the gas on behalf of the federal government. To this end, the Flare Gas Prevention of Waste and Pollution Regulations 2018 was signed by the Minister of Petroleum Resources on 9th July 2018. The NGFCP will ensure government derives value from the natural gas that is currently being flared by the companies. It is expected that the third-party companies shall create job opportunities for host communities in the Niger Delta, and value addition will also be realized through products derived from the flared gas, such as LPG, CNG, power generation, and diesel. In addition to these, Government will also earn some revenue from the sales of gas at flare sites to third parties and from carbon credit earned due to flare elimination. The ultimate objectives of all these gas projects, programs and policy initiatives was to have grown the gas reserves to 203 trillion standard cubic feet by last year and thereby meet her domestic and export needs. No doubt, there has to be an established entity to monitor and regulate all the players and activities in this critical subsector of the industry. That's an in-depth and beautiful report, I dare say, on the potentials of the Nigeria natural gas. You see, Nigeria is indeed blessed with natural gas. All the country needs are investors like yourself to invest and what follows will be surprising 
more positive chain reactions in the economy, more employment, more revenue for development, and so much more. I'll hand you over to Femi Fafiyeb for a one-on-one -on -one interview with a man at the center of Nigeria's gas production. Thanks for joining us. Uh, this time around, we have uh, a very interesting topic to discuss. And uh, for me, I really find it interesting because I know there are a lot of technicalities, you know, uh, that are involved in uh, this issue we are discussing tonight that's talking about gas exploration and production. My guest, Mr. Godde Ine, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Straight away, I want us to look at, uh, you know, one or two issues, uh, you know, in this direction. Basically, a lot of Nigerians have been speculating about, you know, the quantity of gas reserves that Nigeria has today. Yes, thank you. Gas reserves in Nigeria is one of those things that Nigerians are very proud of because of the natural endowment. It is often said that uh, Nigeria has more, more gas than, than oil. But the fact is that the Department of Petroleum Resources is the only data house for the Nigerian oil and gas where you can have information about uh, oil reserve, gas reserve, uh, production and so on and so forth. So as at 1-1-2020, the Nigerian Natural Gas Reserve uh, is put or was put at uh, 203 trillion standard cubic feet. How can we uh, describe Nigeria's daily production in terms of uh, natural Numbers. gas? What are the uh, figures for that? Yes. Gas <coughs> production, like uh, it is known technically, you cannot produce gas and store it. It's not like oil. However, you only produce what you can utilize. Okay? So we have the two types of productions, gas production as it is for, for reserve also, which I have not, I didn't mention. The AG, the stated gas production, that, that is the gas that must come out from oil production as we are producing oil. Okay. The gas must come out, even though it is not in your design. Today, Nigeria is producing over 8 billion standard cubic of gas per day. And that is also constrained to the available market for it. What are the uh, export potentials of Nigeria's uh, gas? Nigeria has the best quality of natural gas, low hydrogen sulfide, low carbon dioxide, and it's also a mix in terms of dry and rich or wet. When you say rich gas, it means that it has appreciable quantity of liquid in it. So the entire gas value chain for our natural gas is complete. Uh, you can't store gas. Does that mean you can't store it at all, or you can't store it for a long time? Or what does it? What does that really mean? Natural gas is produced and processed into components. So those components are what you can store. Okay. 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 If you don't store it. You use it directly as it is being processed. Okay. Like uh, methane, for example. Methane is C1, which is generally regarded as dry gas. So, and that gas, methane plus ethane, is what we use for the power plants. 
and it's also the major component for LNG, liquefied natural gas. So at a certain temperature, okay, when you cool them at a certain temperature, it will turn to what? Liquid. So you can carry it in a vessel under minus 162 degrees Celsius. So it, it comes to a liquid and it is easy for you to transport to a long distance. And that is what we call LNG. So you carry them in cryogenic tanks, not ordinary tanks. Okay. Then when you get to your destination, you deliquefy it. This question is in respect of um, increasing the need for the use of natural gas in various aspects of our nation's economy. Uh, how far has uh, DPR gone in the efforts to drill for more natural gas, you know, uh, aside the associated gas? Gas production is dependent on usage. If you have a, what we call an off-taker, somebody that is going to take the gas from you, so like as, yeah, as a company, it's okay, I want um, 10 million scores of gas per day. So myself as an upstream operator, we now drill that well for you. Okay. So and it's like a pre-order? Yes, mm -hmm. you must order for it. Okay. We call it uh, a long time gas purchase and sales agreement. So if you have such, you have committed to supply the gas and you are committed to pay for it. Okay? okay? For the period the agreement agreement lasts. Yeah. So that is it. You cannot endeavor to produce more than your order. Otherwise, where will you send it to? You may choose to fly it if you do it. And that is what government is trying to eliminate. Now, let's look at uh, the uh, total Nigeria FPSO, that is FPSO Egina. Uh, we were there and to our surprise, no gas you know, was being fled. And the supervisor in charge of the project said this is the only project in uh, Nigeria that does not flare gas. Is there any effort to enforce such rules in other FPSOs or, and, or oil platforms across the country? Of course, yes. It is the wish of the Department of Petroleum Resources to make sure that every oil and gas facility has zero flare tolerance. Egina, as you mentioned, a deep water asset operated by Total. Egina project is a leverage on Aqua facilities, also operated by the same company, Total. And they are proximity, they are of very close proximity. So it was a synergy between the Department of Petrol Resources and Total that made that into happen. And now I will just quickly, uh, for the benefit of the viewer at home, ask you to you know, de define what gas flaring itself is. What is gas flaring, basically? Gas flaring is as it is. You are producing oil and gas just because you don't have the gas handling facility. And like I said, because also you didn't put it in your economic uh, portfolio. The only way to eliminate it is to what? Send it to flare. Waste it. That is to release it into... Burn it off. That is the meaning. To burn it off. Off the gas. Yes, at the detriment of the environment. How far has the uh, gas flare commercialization program of the Department of Petroleum Resources fared so far? This is one of the programs that is the Nigerian gas flare commercialization program. It's one of the programs that government, the Department of Petroleum Resources, has 
use it as a tool. When all the other attempts have failed to stop gas flaring, and it was packaged to be a digital platform from beginning. And what does that mean to us? This is an asset that is already wasted. Let's turn it to money. Let it generate employment opportunities for our people. Okay. Let it create wealth. And that is the novel program anybody can have. Thank you very much. Uh, well, viewer, we've been uh, hosting Mr. Godde Ine, and I'm very sure you must have learned one or two things in the course of this interview. I want to thank you very much, sir, for sparing your time to uh, attend to these issues. We hope that some other time we will, you know, we'll have the privilege of speaking with you again on some other important issues. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, viewer, for watching. Back to Suleiman. We've come to the end of today's program. But before I say my goodbye, I'd like once again to call the Nigeria's investors to try as much as possible to invest in the Nigeria gas industry. I tell you something, the benefits are enormous. Yes, huge. I bet you'll be smiling to the bank and those you employ will also be Singing a happy song, he's a jolly good fellow. Don't you mind me, I'm not a good singer, but believe me, that's just the truth. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.